Um, I hope all of you have a little bit of familiarity with recursion, but I'm going to go and give you a little bit of an update of, the, of where we're at today in the state of the company. And, and then I thought it would be really interesting to talk about um, lessons learned, right? I, I am the chief operating officer at recursion. Chief operating officers love um, lessons learned and kind of relentlessly getting better and better. And so uh, talk a little bit of, about some things that we've learned at recursion as we've built this company. Um, Recursion was founded in 2013. The three co-founders, Chris Gibson, Dean Lee, and Blake Borgeson, um, and Chris, Chris and Dean were actually here at the University of Utah. Uh, Dean's now the president of Merck Research Lab, still on our boards. Chris is our CEO and founder. Um, he Unfortunately, business took him out of the state today, so he couldn't be here. And Blake is an AI guru, still on our board, and, and he just founded and exited his first company in AI. And so uh, Recursion is very much a company that operates at the intersection of technology and biology. OK, so we went public last year. You, you will know that, because I'm going to start with the forward-looking statement slide. Um, and I'll go over a little bit of a history of uh, the, the funding of the company prior to going public um, in one of our lessons. Um, so this kind of uh, reflects where we're at in the company today. And what we're building at Recursion is what we believe will, the pharmaceutical company of the 21st century will look like. And it will be a company that very much sits at the intersection of what we understand in terms of the biopharmaceutical industry and the technology industry. Um, and this is what we mean when we talk about a 21st century biopharma company. Uh, we're a leading pharma tech company, and what we're doing is we're mapping human biology um, and, and the chemistry that interacts with it, and then we're taking those maps of biology and we're translating them into potential medicines. And so um, this is kind of a, you know, a, a very, very high-level overview of, uh, the, to explain recursion today. And, and starting with the, to the left of this slide, um, you know, being positioned as the leading pharma tech company, um, and then several of the previous speakers, Jared, Andrea, kind of mentioned talking about what it's like to exist um, in a company that feels some days like a technology company, some days like a biotechnology company, and every day it has to feel like the integration of those two. We're very intentional in the way that we think about um, bringing this together, and just one example of that is our talent base. We have more than 400 recursionauts now. Um, those recursionauts um, most of them are here in Salt Lake City. We are headquartered um, in downtown Salt Lake City. We also have sites in California and two sites in Canada, in Montreal and Toronto. And we keep, we maintain a balance. We have more than 150 of our folks come from the biopharma industry or backgrounds, biology, chemistry, drug development. Um, and a similar number of folks come from the technology industries, data science, software engineering, machine learning. Um, and maintaining that balance is, is, is absolutely critical to how we build the company. The core technology of the company is um, building these maps of human biology. This is done in human cells, um, primary, human, or primary human cells, in order to understand and model disease. Um, and then we do it using um, laboratory automation at very, very high scale to generate um, very, very large data sets, what we believe to be the world's largest data set of human biology. That sits at 13 petabytes. It grows every day, seven days a week. Um, for those of you who, are, who don't live in the world of technology and petabytes, it's a little bit hard to get your head wrapped around, but if you took every single feature length, length film ever made in high definition, you put them all in one place, that is nowhere near 13 petabytes, right? So just to kind of conceptually get a, a, a sense for the size and magnitude of this data set. And what this data set has allowed us to do is create these maps of human biology. And, um, and you, you see here that these, these maps give us you know, inferences or potential insights into where we can impact human disease um, with chemistry or with uh, potential medicines. Um, and right now, the, the, the data set of this size, when we take this data set, we apply our um, proprietary developed deep learning algorithms, we have cloud computation, we have one of the 100 largest supercomputers in the world, uh, located right here in Salt Lake City, to, to handle all of this data. And that gives us over 200 billion insights that we can then go in and mine those insights to look at where the potential lies um, for, for drug development. 
And then as these um, maps, so that's kind of more the technology side of what recursion's doing, as we translate these into drugs, there's two ways that we bring these drugs forward to patients. One is our internal pipeline. We are a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company. We have um, three of our clinical trials, all in genetic disease. Um, we're heading into phase two or phase two, three, phase two, three um, clinical trials with our first three um, potential drugs in, clin in, in genetic disease. Uh, our, we have another uh, phase one that we're expecting in 2022, and this is in the area of infectious disease. Our pipeline beyond that is um, very broad in a number of therapeutic areas. Um, and, and if you ever want to look at uh, our pipeline graphic, uh, you know, please, please visit our website. Uh, we've worked really hard to try to, to demonstrate what it looks like to translate a technology platform um, into drug development. So, um, so some drugs, it makes sense for us to take forward ourselves and our own internal pipeline, but we also, in, in other cases, in other parts of disease, it makes a lot more sense for us to partner with um, the heavy hitters in the industry. And so two of those partnerships that we um, have announced over the last couple of years, um, one is with Bayer Pharmaceuticals, and, and this is a fibrosis, a pan-fibrosis partnership, um, looking for uh, you know, multiple potential medicines in the fibrotic disease space. The other that we just announced uh, in Q4 of last year is with uh, my alma mater, uh, Genentech Roche, uh, as Kelvin mentioned, I spent uh, more than 20 years there. And um, that is in select GI cancer, as well as a very decade plus uh, exploration into understanding neuroscience broadly. And one thing that's so interesting about that partnership, uh, many things, but it's understanding neuroscience broadly. And, and so not only looking the, for partnering on the drugs, which is pretty obvious when you partner with a large pharmaceutical partner, but really partnering on um, providing the maps of biology in neuroscience. So that's a really exciting partnership. Um, okay, so that's the overview of what we do at Recursion. Very quickly, this is a busy slide, you don't need to, to know all the detail of this, but I, I think it helps to say, like, what does, this, what does, a, what does an insight in a map look like? And so this, this red heat map here you see um, is, an, is an example of how we translate a map into a medicine. And so this is, um, if you take those more than 200 billion inferences in our map, this drills down in, into just one, um, one very localized area of that map. Um, and this is in, in the, the gene CDK12, which is of interest in cancers like ovarian cancer. Um, and you know, finding an interesting insight of the relation, uh, a, novel in, a, a novel relationship to what is um, anonymized here is gene A. And you can also see in this kind of map, looking at gene A, we can take um, a small molecule compound um, uh, notified by the, the REC ID there and look at the, the titration of the impact of that potential small molecule drug on gene A. And this is the kind of insight that we can then see, does this actually translate into something that impacts cancer? And you can see on the bottom of this slide here how that is translated into an animal model of ovarian cancer. So that's a, a quick example um, from our oncology pipeline of how we translate these maps into potential medicines. And uh, this is just a quick, you know, kind of slide that talks about the sector more broadly. Technology-enabled drug dis d development is a relatively new sector. This, this, side, this slide's about a year old, to be fair. This was actually part of our um, IPO Roadshow deck, so it's uh, a little bit dated. But, um, but I think, you know, I joined uh, Recursion in 2018, uh, moved here from the San Francisco Bay Area to join this uh, young startup that was still, uh, you know, right here in Research Park in the University of Utah. And, you know, and I, you know, and I came from the center of the biotech and the tech industry in San Francisco, and, and this was, people were just getting interested in this concept of like, like, you know, and, and you know, is, is AI in pharma hype, you know, can technology really, you know, medicine's hard. Can technology really have an impact in medicine? Um, and I was really excited to join Recursion kind of at the cusp of an industry being created. I joined Genentech in 1996, which was at the cusp uh, of the biotech and uh, the modern biotech engine industry being created um, and got to experience that 20 year ride of being the leader of, um, you know, of the forefront of the biotech industry. And so this opportunity to come to Recursion and help Chris build a company at the forefront of the technology enabled drug discovery or pharma tech industry was incredibly exciting. And, but at that time, there were, there were few companies. Now there's hundreds of companies. They would never all fit on this chart. And if you look at some of these, the, the cluster of companies that Recursion's in here, um, 
you know, Abcellera, Relay, Schrodinger. Um, these are uh, Excientia. These companies, you know, we're public companies now, right? This sector has evolved incredibly um, in the last few years, and so it's really exciting um, to, to be a leader in the sector right here in the state of Utah. Um, okay, so, so that's a little bit about recursion, what, what we're up to, and so, so three lessons learned. And one is leaning into disruptive leadership. Building at the intersection of technology and biotechnology is hard for so many reasons. It's, you have to build a culture, you have to build um, a company that is by definition doing something that people don't understand or people haven't realized is going to be important yet. And I look at this even if you look at the way the company was funded. Um, Series A oh, was led by a tech investor. Series B led by a tech investor. Series C led by an, a, what I would call a, a tech biotech hybrid investor. Um, you know, a, a very sophisticated long-term thinking outfit that it had a success investing in both industries. Series D was led by a big pharma company. Um, and then um, we went public after that and, and, and presumably uh, were, were um, invested in by a mix of of folks, uh, biopharmatech and, and probably generalist. And creating this environment, we have to go to all of the tech investor conferences and we have to go to all of the biopharma investor conferences. Um, you have, we have to create this space um, because it is disruptive, because neither of those kind of sides of the camp, the side, fully understand the potential of the platform and the potential of the drugs. Um, you know, what's quite heartening is that we're seeing after, um, you know, all these years and all this investment, a nine-year-old company actually starting to see some of those tech investors at the same firm actually maybe coming to the same meeting as, as their biotech counterparts, the, the biotech folks maybe being interested in tech conferences. So we actually are seeing um, some kind of some interesting blending of these two industries as it becomes, and I think to me those are just those, those signs that people are getting more and more interested in the reality of what a pharma tech company um, looks like and can do. Uh, the second uh, lesson here, invest in culture. And I think this is, a, you know, building a, a quick company, going to an exit, something like that. Maybe you don't have to invest in culture deeply, but building a company uh, like Recursion with a very um, ambitious mission to decode biology, to radically improve lives, that's looking at a multi-year, multi-decade horizon of the kind of company we want to build. Um, we spend so much time on the culture of our company. This is our headquarters. Um, it's a former sporting goods store right in downtown Salt Lake City. Uh, on the right here are robots. On the left are um, a lot of recursion odds working. And you can actually see these big bright columns actually show three of the five values that we have as a company. We care, we deliver, we learn, we act boldly with integrity. Um, and we're one recursion, and so I think, and I, and I can rattle those off because we use them every day, we live them, they're in our decisions, every one of them has an emoji in Slack, it's how we give kudos to each other on our team. Um, we're incredibly thoughtful about our values, uh, we're incredibly thoughtful about what modern employees, what a modern company and modern employees want. We build on-site childcare very, very early. Uh, we think very much, very deeply about diversity and inclusion, we're 45% female as a company at every level of the company, um, all the way up through leadership and we work very hard to, to create diverse slates, diverse pipelines, so that we can bring the right people into our company. Um, and I think it goes on and on and on. And I, I think the lesson here for us is you want to build a 21st century company, you want to build a disruptive company, you have to build a place that the disruptors of the 21st century really want to come and work and, and come together. And then the final lesson learned here uh, is building community. And I was, uh, when I was listening to Andrea uh, talk about um, the community and the, um, being part of recursion, I almost thought, like, you know, nobody could have said it better than that. So thank you, Andrea. And, you know, we are very dedicated to building in the community here in Salt Lake. That's um, why we have Altitude Lab, which is the incubator in combination with University of Utah. Uh, we think about building deep patient communities with organizations, for example, the Children Tumors Foundation. Uh, we have a drug for neurofibromatosis 2 going into uh, the clinic. 
and you know, building the community with the, the government. Uh, one thing that's like really amazing about Utah and about building here in Salt Lake City is as somebody who's only lived here for four years and most of those were a pandemic, I still feel like I'm deeply ingrained in this community. I know so many people here. I've been chatting with people all day and I, and I think that's something really special and unique about Salt Lake City and we're incredibly proud um, to build this company here and to be a part of it. With that, thank you for your time and uh, Hope you learned a little bit more about recursion, so take care, everybody. Thanks.